A controversial voting law takes effect Monday in a high-stakes battleground state. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed the measure Friday. It implements an amendment to Florida's constitution that restores voting rights to nonviolent convicted felons. But there is a catch. Many who thought they would be allowed to cast a ballot will still be barred from voting. One woman who served her time told CBS News she feels she was given, quote, false hope. And the reporter of that article joins me right now. Tyler Kendall is a CBSN associate producer. Good to see you. Thanks, Vlad. So you've been reporting on this for quite some time. Uh, tell me what this, what the new change is here. Right. So Amendment 4 was a ballot provision that passed um, with a lot of support during the midterms in Florida. About 65 percent of voters approved of it. And what it did was it granted nonviolent convicted felons access to the ballot after they, quote, served all times of their sentencing. And that phrase, that is the key part in this entire controversy. What happened was lawmakers in Tallahassee thought that was too vague. So what they did was they set out and they implemented this new bill and now law that's going into effect Monday that defines the scope of all terms of a sentencing to include financial obligations. So that means that if somebody has served their time but they still owe fines, fees or restitution, they are no longer eligible to vote under Amendment 4. So there's been some pushback. Oh, there's been a lot of pushback. So Florida is a really interesting case study in that it's one of the only states whose court systems is solely reliant on these fees and fines imposed on those going through its justice system. So voting rights activists aren't disputing that fees and fines are part of somebody's sentence. Rather, what they're saying is that by tying somebody's ability to pay off their financial obligations with their ability to vote, you're discriminating on the basis of wealth. They say that this violates the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause, as well as the 24th Amendment prohibiting a poll tax. Now, Republican lawmakers have pushed back on criticism. They say that if they didn't go out to define this law, then these cases about somebody's eligibility would be decided on a case-by-case -case basis up to the judge's discretion. Of course, voting rights activists say this is creating way more hoops to jump through rather than going through these hurdles. Lawmakers say that they were trying to help prevent. All right, so then I guess the question becomes what happens next? Right, so the law takes effect on Monday, July 1st, and an interesting study by Quinnipiac University actually found that Florida voters were split on this exact issue about whether they felt financial obligations should be a requirement to access the ballot under Amendment 4. So it seems that uh, public opinion on the ground is pretty divided. However, there have already been a slew of lawsuits. Governor Ron DeSantis signed this bill on Friday and almost immediately, within hours, many have filed their complaints. I spoke to somebody that did. She is paying over $4,200 in fines and fees for a one-time felony drug conviction. And she says that under her current payment plan that was agreed to with a Florida judge, um, she won't be eligible to vote until 2031. Wow, and that's that, remarkable. Right, and that's because she, um, due to her financial situation, she is only able to pay $30 a month in these court fees and fines. And now when we brought in it out on the national level, this constitutional argument is really um, picking up attention, especially as we head into a 2020 presidential year. And Florida is such a critical swing state. So you're seeing 2020 Democrats already weigh in. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, the minute that the bill was signed, she tweeted um, that this was Jim Crow era nonsense. So you're seeing it, um, this constitutional argument and some really serious allegations of voter suppression make it into this conversation on the national stage as we head into this presidential year. And it's an important discussion uh, to be had. Uh, uh, Tyler Kendall, thank you so much for your reporting. It's really great stuff. Thank you.